This is Algebra 2 with Trig. We're working with the quiz review of 7.6 through 7.5, 7.6, 7 and 7.7. .7. This here is 7.7. .7. We have these two points. We're going to write an exponential function that goes through these two points. So we know our equation is y equals ab to the x power. So y is a half. I'm sure that doesn't look like y. Your a and b is what you don't know. Your x is 0. So we have a half. Remember, when you divide by, or actually, when you're raising a power to 0, that's just 1. So you know that a is going to be a half, because a half divided by 1 is just a half. So then we're going to come over here and say 9 over 2 equals ab to the second. Well, we know that a is now a half. I need to solve for that b value. So I multiply by 2, and I take the square root, and I get a plus or minus 3, but for this to be exponential, it does need to be a positive. So my equation now is y equals a half 3 to the x power. When you plug in 0, you get 3 to the 0 power, which is 1. 1 times a half is a half. Plug in 2, 3 to the second power is 9, divided by 2 or multiplied by a half, gives you 9 halves. So check your work. Be sure it's correct. Let's try that again. We know our equation takes our y value, ab to the x value, and it takes our y value equals a, b to the x. So this is 2 over 5 divided by b to the first power. And then I'm going to use that over here. Now, what's another way I, I could write this? When you have a, a fraction divided by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So this is really 2 over 5b. So over here, I'm going to write 2 over 5b. So next, we'd say that 8 fifths equals 2 fifths times b cubed over b, which is 8 fifths equals 2 fifths b squared. Multiply by the 5, divide by the 2, and I get an answer of 4. b equals 2. That means that the A is going to be two tenths, one fifth. So Y equals one fifth times two to the X. We can plug in the one. So we get an answer two fifths. Plug in a three, which is eight, which gives us eight fifths. Works out perfect. Not a lot of room to write these, but cram it in here for you. So we have 12, which equals AB to the first power. So 12 divided by B equals A. And then on this side, we get 3 fourths equals AB to the negative 1 power. That's interesting. 
So we're going to take this and plug it in over there. So 3 fourths equals 12 over b times b to the negative 1. That's actually going to put a b squared on the bottom. So we'll cross multiply. Just think about your algebra. And when you take the square root of 16, you get 4. So we're going to take this 4 and figure out that a equals 3. So we get y equals 3 times 4 to the x value. If you put in a 12 here, oops, if you put in a 1 here, thank goodness, you get 4 to the first power. 4 times 3 is 12. So you got that exact result. And if you put a negative 1 here, the negative 1 makes the 4 go to the denominator, and that gives you 3 fourths. So you're able to check every one of your answers to be sure it makes sense. Notice, calculators were not used. Show your work. Okay? Find the exponential model by solving for y. Not overly needed. The exponential model, this is an honor test. Okay, uh, one thing that you could start out with is that e to the 0.283x minus 62575 equals y. There we got y by itself. You could clean this up a little bit more even, um, but this is an honor test. So no, no stress about that one. Number 10. We're going to use the points x and y to draw a plot of these points. So here's our original data. We need to get that data into our calculator. We're going to find an exponential model that matches this. So we go to Stat. We go to Edit. And i got a lot of data in here. I'm going to go up to L3 and get rid of that. Go to L2 and get rid of that. That may have been the right numbers for me. Different example I did. 9.41, 26.34, So we get all our numbers in here. Be sure there's the same amount of numbers in L2 as you have in L1. So next, we're going to go to STAT over to CALC and down to number zero, which is the exponential regression. This calculator is showing you all these different steps through here. Some calculators will only show you a, a very tight top equation that says um, exponential regression. But my numbers are in L1 and L2, so I go down to calculate. And we have our answer as y equals 1.2, 2.8 to the x power. That's that data. It says draw a scatter plot of x to the uh, natural log of y. Well, to figure out what the natural log of y is going to be, we go to stat over to edit, or stay at edit, and in log L3, we'll go up on top of L3 and type in natural log of L2, because L2 were all of our y values. 
You could type it in here individually every time, or you could have the calculator do it automatically by hitting enter. Drops all the numbers in. So those numbers are going to be making this, this table. We have the natural log of y now. So we get 1.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, actually 3.3, looking at your calculator, 4.3, 5.3, and 6.4. So if we needed to plot those, 1 over up 1.2, 2 over up 2.2, .2, 3 over of 3.3, 4 over of 4.3, 5 over of 5.3, and 6 over over 6.4. You can see that that data is very linear. Find an exponential model for the data. That's this data. There's your exponential model. We did the natural log of y. Why did we find these values? If x comma natural log of y shows a linear let's say linear graph then the original data was a good exponential model. That's why we want to find out that data. We want to see if they're all increasing pretty much by the same amount. We went up by 1, this one went up by 1.1, 1 .1, went up by 1, went up by 1, went up by 1.1. 1 .1. So it's just over 1 each time, and then it rolls over to the next tenth. This next example, we're trying to find the power function. So we're doing the same thing, but this time our equation is y equals a x to the b power. Notice the different order of where the x is and where the b is located. So 3 is our y. We don't know the a. The x is a 1 to the b power. So when we divide by 1 to the b, it doesn't matter what b is because... 3 divided by 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is just going to be 3. Then we're going to take the 24 and we're going to plug in our 3 for the A. You can't multiply to call that 6. You have to divide. And the log base 2 of 8 equals b. And if you don't know what that is, you could do the change of base formula. But hopefully you recognize that that would be 3, of course. 2 to the third power equals 8. So y equals a, which is 3, b, which is 3. Nope, sorry. Your b is 3, yes. x to the third power. So when x is 1, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, we'll just give you 3. 2, 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So you can check your work.
So 2 equals a times 1 to the b power. So again, we're dealing with this 1. That's a real easy deal. So 16 to the a, x is 4 to the b power. Now that looks easy. It looks like it's just squared, right? But if we throw a 2 in here, that makes that a little trickier to work with. So now we're going to divide by 2. 4 to what power equals b? 4 times 2 is 8. 4, let's see, 4 to what power equals 8? 4 times 2 is 8, but not 4 to the second power. That's 16. So to solve this one, we need to do log base 4 of 8 equals b. Log of 8 over log of 4. Change of base formula. Bring it over a calculator. We're going to do log of 8 divided by log of 4. We get 1.5. So our final answer is y equals 2 times x to the 1.5. which is 3 over 2. 1.5 is 3 over 2. A little tougher for us to recognize in terms of just plugging in numbers real quick. So we'll do it one more time. We have a half equals a x to what power? Well, a is going to be 4 to the b. Now remember, when you have a fraction in a fraction, you make them both fractions, and you multiply by the reciprocal. So this becomes 1 over 2 times 4 to the power of b. That's not 8. So then over here, we're going to say 0.75 equals our a, which is 1 over 2 times 4 to the power of b, times b, well, that's our x. So let's say 9 to the power of b. We can reorganize this a little bit. 0.75 equals 1 over 2 times 9 to the b over 4 to the b. We can leave this as 9 fourths and put the B on the outside. So multiply by 2 to get 1.5. Now we're solving for an exponent. So we have to say log of 9 fourths, 1.5 equals B. So the natural log of 1.5 over the well, natural log would have been fine, but common log of 1.5, common log of 9 fourths. So using our calculator, common log of 1.5 divided by the common log of 9 divided by 4 gives us 0.5. So our final answer is y equals the A value, well, we don't know what the A value is. 0.5 goes in here, and we get 1 over 2 times 2 to the half. Well, remember, oh, it's a 4. All right. When you do a half power, remember, that's the square root. So 1 over 2 times 2. So that's 1 fourth. the x value to the b. 
So if we plug 9 in here, 9, half power of 9, which is the square root of 9, which is 3, 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths, otherwise known as 0.75. Plug in 4, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 over 4 is a half. So again, that worked out great. Check your work. This next set of questions is not on, not, let's try to spell that right, on the test. Okay. Okay, this one could be. It's going to be the same as what we were doing before. So we're going to go to our calculator. I get it to show up in a... So we go to stat, down to edit. We need to get rid of those values, so you hit clear above them and enter. Clear above them and enter. Clear above them and enter. Don't hit the delete button. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Apparently I didn't need to get rid of that list. 2.1. Seven point three one. So we plug all of our numbers in. Now since we have our numbers in, we'll hit stat over to calc. This one is the power regression, so it's all the way down to letter A. And then we go down to calculate. And our power regression is going to be Y equals 2.1 X to the 1.8. That would be our power well, I wrote it right there. Power regression. Now we need to come back to our calculator. Hit stat and edit. We want to bring that new data because we want to find the natural log of x and also the natural log of y. Right here it's telling us what to do. Natural log of x, natural log of y for our new list. So to do that we're going to say natural log of L1 gave us all the numbers. And in L4, you're going to say natural log of L2. So these are our new values that are going to go into our new table. So we're going to get the values of 0, 0 0.7, 1.1, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 0.74, 0.1.99, Two point seventy two, three point twenty four, three point sixty four, and three point ninety seven. So if we come over here to plot those at zero, we're going up point seven. That's about right there. At point seven, we go up almost two. At one point one, we go up to point seven. At one point four, one, two, three and a quarter, 1.6, and at one, almost two, that's up one, two, three, almost all the way up to four. 
and you can see that that data is very close to linear. We did the natural log of x and the natural log of y. Why did we do that? If plotting natural log of x come a natural log of y displays a linear line then the original data is a good power model. That's why we wanted to find that table is because if you notice they're all going up by about the same amount each time. This is going up by about one and a quarter Uh, you would also have to pay attention to how your x's are going up, though. You would have to look at the slopes. Okay, minimum wage. The table shows the minimum wage hour in the United States since 1960. Let x equal 1 to represent the years since 1960, 2 represents 1965, so x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Pay close attention to that because if you type it into your equation a little bit wrong, you'll get a different result. Okay. Let y represent the minimum wage. Use a graphing calculator to find the power model. Okay, so we're supposed to use a power model to this. So what we're going to do is take our graphing calculator. We'll get rid of the tables that we just used. We can still use 1 through 6 and go all the way up to 10 now. And then one dollar, one point two five, one point six, two ten, three ten, three thirty five, three eighty, four twenty five, five fifteen. And again, they're saying 515 a second time. We all know that it's even grown up since then. A lot, actually. So, to find out the power model, we take our data, we go to Stat, over to Calc, down to the letter A for power regression, down to Calculate. And that gives us our equations that we're going to use which is y equals eight or point eight one two nothing says what's rounded to so four numbers is fabulous the more numbers the better x to the power of point seven eight eight four now what it wants us to do is figure out what's going to happen out in the year 2020. Well, we're getting closer and closer to that, aren't we? Uh, so we're going to take this I think this might be more information than what you care to see, but if you go to VARS down to statistics over to equation, you can find those A and B values. 
So we can get our A, which is exactly that. And we're going to say that that answer times 2020, right? That was the year that we need. So we need to figure out how many X's that is. So in 1960 was one. We know that 2010 would be 11. 2015 would be 12. 2020 would be the number 13. So 13 stands in for our X. And we're going to raise that down to stat over to equation to our B value. We get 6.14. We know that that's not quite accurate. I think we're up closer to 8, but it's gone crazy recently. Apparently, if you would have used the same exact, or if you used the decimal values, you would have still gotten 6.14. It was a close enough rounding. It's just, if you don't use enough numbers, it starts to fall off a little bit. Round that to point 0.8, round this to point 0.8, and you're not getting as accurate. You can do real exact values if you know how to use your calculator.